Hello everyone, it's Shannon here for Waffle Flower Crafts. In today's video, I'm going to be making a really fun interactive card using some Xyron products. I'll be using these Waffle Flower products today. First up is the T for Two stamp set. This is a super cute stamp set. I really love it. I'm going to create a really cute scene with that set. I'm also using the Across the Mile stamp set. I'll be using um, a sentiment and the banner from that set. And then the Possum set as well. And these are the dies. I'll be using the Lacy Layers die, the Stitch Layers die, and the Lacy Layers 5x7 die today. So lots of products today, but this is a really fun interactive card that's really great for kids. And here's the Xyron products I'm going to use today. So this is the Xyron Sticker Maker. maker. This is an inch and a half. And um, it comes with different cartridges that you can put inside the, the, the sticker maker. Today I'm going to use um, some magnetic tape. So I'm going to use the magnetic cartridge today. It's really, really easy to remove the cartridges. They have these two tabs that you just squeeze in and you pull out. And then the same process to put the new cartridge in. And I just think this is one of the handiest tools you can have in your craft room. It's nice and small and it can you can use um, permanent you can make like stickers and have permanent adhesive in the back or make kind of like masks because they have cartridges that have um, repositional adhesive as well. And you just pop the little dot, the little, um, you'll see me use it, you pop in your image and you just pull the tape and it comes out with the adhesive on the back or in this case the magnet on the back. So I've already, since this is going to be a long video today, I've already gone ahead and stamped and Copic colored all the images that I'm going to use on today's card. On the left side, I'm cutting them off right now. These are the images I'm going to actually put on the front of the card. So these images will not have any magnets on the back and I'll just put those aside for now. All these images here except for that one mistake bear right there. Um, these are all going to, I'm going to put the uh, magnetic tape on the back using the creative, the sticker maker. So um, I've stamped them mostly in a strip because that's the best way that they feed into the machine. These um, bears though are cutting it pretty close so I'm going to cut them out um, close to the edge but leaving a nice little border because I do want to use the matching dies for the two bears. So I'm going to cut it close but not, not all the way to the black edge because I still want to be able to die cut this and have that nice little white border around the bears. Okay, so those are all the images I'm going to put through the sticker maker and have them have the magnet on the back. So now you'll see me use it here. I'm just going to pop them into that slot. First I'm going to check and make sure that that bear is going to fit. So I'm holding up against the tape and yeah, it's going to fit but it's going to be very close. <laughs> and so I'm going to stick it in there and then I just pull on the tape on the bottom and then that bear will come out and it will be stuck to the magnetic tape. I'm going to go ahead and get the other bear set up in there to go through to. I'm trying to be careful here not to waste tape. Again, I'm checking just to make sure it didn't. I've cut it close enough that it will still fit, um, that it's not too wide and it will fit through and and um, be completely covered by the magnetic tape. I'm pulling it through here, and I did make a mistake. I got a little antsy and I overlapped. I tucked that second bear up under the first so I will have to redo that first bear that's just because I was um, trying to be conservative with the um, tape and I should have just pulled it a little bit more before I started feeding in the second image and but you can see how these images all being on strip makes it really easy to uh, get the magnetic magnetic tape on the back of them just by feeding that long strip right on through so there you go I've got all of them there except for that first bear the little t his little bottom there didn't quite I got the other bear's head underneath it, so um, that's not going to have magnetic tape on there. So I will have to redo that one. I'm just going to um, cut these apart now, and then I will, first I'm going to try to separate those two bears. So I will cut it a little bit, and then I will remove the top. There's like a top layer of plastic that just comes right off. I'm not going to actually remove that until I'm done um, die cutting. There's really no point right now, and when I die cut, it'll come right off and um, all the tape that I use to hold the dies down will just stick to it and it's just a really easy clean up and you'll see that in the video. So there I got them apart and you see how the bottom of that first bear does not isn't covered by the magnetic tape so I will have to redo him 
but now I'm ready to start my die cutting. Well, I probably didn't have to redo him, but it just bothered me that he wasn't completely covered with magnetic tape because he had enough magnet on him that he would have stuck. But I did redo that first bear, and he's on there. I've already um, aligned the dice for the top um, stretch of magnetic tape, and now I'm just doing these last two bears, and I'm just using some little scraps of painter's tape to attach to make, once I get the uh, die lined up, I'll just use some tape to hold it in place. And again, I did not remove the plastic layer, the thin plastic layer that comes, that sandwiches your your image um, underneath the um, magnetic tape. I didn't remove that yet because um, it sticks to the tape really nicely. So you know sometimes when you remove your tape, you kind of end up damaging your image a little bit sometimes. So um, this does the tape just stuck right to that plastic and then I just peeled off the plastic and then my die come out completely clean so really nice and it's just so cool that you can die cut um, with that magnetic tape so it really gets nice clean images and you don't have to fussy cut or anything so there's all my ma my images all die cut and you can see how they the magnets work and they stick together it works really well so I'm going to put those aside and save those for later and now I'm going to move on to some more of the engineering of the card here so first up I'm going to um, put down some paper because I'm going to do some ink blending this is a 65 pound weight so a thinner paper panel here it's four and a quarter by five and a half and I've already stamped some images from the T for two stamp set again and I've Copic colored them already just to save some time and then I've also created some masks using um, full adhesive post-it uh, notes so I'm putting the masks now over um, all my Copic colored images because I'm going to do some ink blending and that's also why I have that paper underneath just so I keep my workspace clean and I have something to um, tap the excess ink off of this is a scrap of um, contact paper and I'm going to use it as a kind of like a mask today to protect the upper portion because I'm going to create a little scene here so this lower portion I'm going to ink up in greens so it looks like grass and the upper portion I'll ink up in blue so it looks like the sky so I'm just using that to mask off it's kind of I just freehand cut it so it's a little um, bumpy so it looks a little hilly when it's all done really really simple to do and the contact paper works beautifully for this it's just it holds the paper down really well you don't get any um, ink blending underneath it or seeping underneath it and um, it remove you can remove it really really easy so another really good use for um, contact paper so I'm starting with uh, I'm gonna do some ink blending with distressed uh, oxides I'm starting with twisted citron and then I'm gonna move on to uh, this is lucky clover so a really nice rich green and I'm just blending the two together with um, some mini uh, mini blending tool I do only have two um, little handles so a lot of the times um, you can tell the people who only have a few handles because their little t tops of their their foam tops have little nicks out of them when they peel them off of their <laughs> handles I should probably get some more handles but um, I've just been too busy to go to bother doing that. So now I'm doing the sky. I just peeled. You saw how easy I peeled right off that um, contact paper. And now I'm inking up the sky first with um, broken china, and then I'll um, do just a tiny bit of um, salty ocean. Okay, and that's it. And I didn't even bother masking off the green because I wasn't going to go all the way to the bottom. I kind of like that that gradation to white up at the sky. Now I'm taking a little bit of water um, and just flicking it on the surface. And I will caution you here: um, you have to, you want to try to avoid those areas with the stamped image, even with that mask on top, because the water can seep through and um, hit that uh, ink underneath, which is just a dye ink. It's uh, Tuxedo Memento um, black, and it can kind of bleed if you get it wet. So just be very, very cautious when you, if you do any of this water. Um, splotching I guess which re you sprinkle in the water and then you use paper towel or a napkin to kind of pick up the water and it picks up some of the ink and has this nice effect 
kind of breaks up the um, the gradation a little bit and I like it. So just be cautious of that because you don't want to um, mess up those images, those your Copic colored images. Okay, so I just peeled off the masks now that I'm all done with my blending and my um, my spritzing of water and now I'm going to move on to uh, creating the inside panel of the car. So I've used the largest die from the Stitch Layers die set and I die cut out of 110 pound white cardstock at the, using that largest die which creates like a frame and a center. I'm just going to use that frame and I did it out of a panel so the panel was five and a half by four and a quarter and then I also die cut on magnetic um, adhesive. The stuff that you use to um, stick your to store your dies that you stick on cardstock and you use to store your dies. I just used a scrap of this and I ran it through my die cutting machine with that stitch layers die and then it, it cuts all the way through but um, I still take my scissors and cut along the the edge just to remove that excess because it doesn't actually cut through it cuts through the magnet but it doesn't cut through to the um, the backing. So now I'm showing you, I'm going to, this is my card, it's a, it's a, again, it's a 110 pound cardstock, so nice thick heavy duty cardstock, and I'm going to use my cuddle bug here to do some um, debossing with the um, die. I really like this technique, um, it's kind of new to me, but I've really been using it a lot lately because I think it's so beautiful and it's a really nice way to add some cat some little interest without you know making it it's a nice subtle interest that's what I'm trying to say <laughs> so I've layered it at here I use a couple paper shims and I, a little rubber mat and um, I'm putting the mat a uh, mat um, underneath one of the paper shims because one of my girls colored on my little mat and if I run it through I'll get some of that color on the the um, cardstock but this creates a nice embossed um, look or debossed look on the panel so it adds a little bit of interest a little bit of texture um, it's a really nice little effect and if you want I've done another a, a video recently with um, one of the stitch sets and uh, um, the stitch peony set and debossing technique or embossing with dyes and so if you want some you know a better video on debossing that's a one to check out okay so now I've taken the five by seven lacy layers or lacy layers five by seven and I die cut from the second die in that set um, this scalloped panel so it's a large panel out of vellum and now I'm going to create an envelope by folding it not quite in half it's about three quarters of an inch um, away from I stopped about three quarters of an inch away from the edge because that three quarters is going to become my little fold to keep the the envelope closed. I'm going to use my uh, scoreboard here and I'm just scoring it just above the top of that front scallop. Just scoring it right there. Not being super precise here, just, just doing it right above that scallop line and then I'll fold that lip over. So now that folds over and that will create a little lip to hold um, the envelope close. This envelope is going to hold all those little magnetic dies um, so when the the receiver receives the card they can open up the envelope and then create their own little scene um, on the inside panel and I'll, and I'll explain it more once we get towards the end. So I'm now using some score tape it's um, 1 8 of an inch thick it could really be anything here just um, putting it on the two inside flaps. I'm going to peel it off and then fold this close. So now it's like a little pocket. And now I'm going to put uh, score tape all around the edges of the back side of the envelope. And this is so I can put the envelope onto the card. So I think this is a really great card for kids, especially for a birthday. A lot of cards that my daughters receive will have like stickers that they can kind of pull off and then decorate the inside of the card with. So that's kind of my idea for this card. Instead of stickers though, we're using magnets. And the nice thing about magnets is, is they're reusable 
And um, once they're done playing with the card, you could even put them on the fridge and use them that way as well. So I think this is a really fun interactive card for kids. And it's a great thing for, it's kind. It's a very involved project, but it's great for um, maybe like a, a money gift, you know, something that you wanna, um, it's almost like a present within itself. So I'm just showing you here that the two inside the frame and the uh, um, blended background, those are just, they were five and a half by four and a quarter standard A2 sides, but they're a little big when I close the card up. That thickness kind of pops out the edge. So I just went ahead and trimmed the edge just like an eighth of an inch off of one side. And now when I close the card, there won't be any hanging out and it'll close nice and even. So I just put you some Tombow Mono Liquid Adhesive there to adhere that frame down. And now the um, magnetic panel will go right inside. I just pulled off the adhesive and just tucked it right inside because again, I used the same die to die cut that. So they nest uh, right inside each other beautifully. And then I'm just going to adhere that um, blended panel to the outer frame of cardstock. So no glue gets on the magnetic panel. So that magnetic panel is hidden, but um, there's no glue on it to obstruct or to mess up that magnetic force to hold those little images down. Now I'm going to, after I just peeled off the backing of the score tape, I just stuck that envelope onto the inside. And now I'm going to arrange the images. These are images that I showed you in the very beginning that I colored and I just went ahead and die cut them. Pretty simple here. And I'm just going to arrange them within that debossed frame with um, just using some um, Tombow mono liquid adhesive here just to hold them down. And um, not, I'm not bothering to glue them completely down because I kind of like it when, um, I should say, I'm not putting glue all the way to all the edges of the image because I kind of like when some of the edges are popped up a little bit. There's plenty of glue here on the inner parts to hold it down, but the edges are not completely glued flat, so they kind of pop up away from, so it's, a, it's like slight dimension without actually adding any foam tape or um, craft tape or anything, or craft foam. Okay, so now I'm pulling out those magnetic images here and I'm showing you how you can stick them onto that um, blended panel there because that magnetic, because of that magnetic panel underneath. And again, that blended panel was only 65 pounds. So it was a thinner cardstock. So if you do this, you wanna make sure you use a thinner cardstock. It probably would work with 80, um, probably even 110, but you get a nicer hold with something thinner like 65 pound. And so those magnets six sit there and they um, the receiver can play with them and remove them and set up their own scene and even potentially just play you know with the images and create their own little story imaginative play so now I'm taking all those images and I'm gonna get this ready for mailing I'm just gonna tuck them into that envelope that we created and I like that it's made out of vellum because that way the receiver kind of goes oh you know they kind of get the idea of that there's little images in there and they can play with them and open them up. So I'm tucking all those images. I cut a lot of them there so they can have lots of fun. And I'm just gonna use a little piece of washi tape here to hold that flap down. So it's really easy to open when they receive it. And that's simple. So there's the little card. It's a really fun card, I think, for kids, like I was saying before, because it's almost like a gift or a toy within itself. And again, if they've <laughs> played it beyond the card, they could also use the magnets on the, the uh, refrigerator as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed my card today. If you want any more information on the products I use, please visit waffleflower.com. You can follow us on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook for more creative ideas. Thanks for watching, guys.